Welcome to Reddit Aliens. Serious. What's the worst thing you've ever witnessed with your own eyes? Not safe for work. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. My baby's crib caught fire while he was in it. I watched him burn, and he had to have skin grafts on his face and hands. I still see it sometimes when I close my eyes. The death of a father. One of my good friend's dad passed away from cancer. I was there when he took his last breath, along with his family. Holy shit, that hit me hard AF. Because I was there as an extra hand to help him and his family. Five months. It was a long five months, but F. The emotions ran on hyperdrive. Sadness, plus the rush of thoughts. Will I have to go through this too? Will this be the end result for my dad? F. I totally not effing ready to be set free on my own. I went to check on a friend because we hadn't heard from him for a few days, found him hanging from a tree in his backyard. When I was 15, my family and my aunt's family went to a beach house to celebrate the New Year's Eve and the week after. The Brazilian sun was searing hot, I could smell the feijota from the house across the street, and the younger kids were having fun in the pool area. I decided to go swim in the pool and take a jump. As I emerge my head into the surface, I'm instantly met with the vision of my cousin trying to lift this little girl's purple drowned body out of the water, screaming. The girl is my aunt's niece on her side of the family. The cousin dropped her limp body back into the water because she was too heavy. Everyone was in a panic. They got her out and started resuscitation. Her mother's screams are still seared into my mind. She left her unattended inside the house for one minute just to make her lunch plate. Her mother fell into the pool while running toward the scene. My mom and my uncle did the resuscitation. The way her chest was compressed so deeply into her body was agonizing, and when the girl coughed some water out, they ran to the hospital. We got news in the afternoon that she woke up and was fine. After being more than 10 minutes without breathing, it was a miracle. Two days after, everyone was back at the pool like nothing happened. It was so weird. Some things in this world were not meant for our eyes to see. Good luck. I was maybe in 5th or 6th grade. I saw my mom from her backside talking to my sister from the dark hallway. I was trying to scare my mom from the shadows, got on all fours and crawled slowly toward her. When my own mother that was wearing a nightgown, this was completely normal, bent over to pet the family chihuahua. I saw my mom's vagina. Oh god, it was so dark and weird looking. I've never seen one before. I didn't know what I just saw. Never told anyone this before, but that effed me up bad. Yeah. When I was like 11, my neighbor ran over her husband's dog after she found out he cheated on her, and she just left the dog like a pancake in the middle of the cul-de-sac. Me and my mom had to use a shovel to scrape him off and into a trash bag. I hate people. Had a friend almost die in my arms from a heroin overdose. She was completely pale and almost gone. EMT has brought her back. I've never witnessed anything like that before. It was terrifying. She's clean now and just had a baby. We don't talk anymore, but I'm glad she's doing well. I was 10 years old when my baby brother passed away. Five and a half months spent in a hospital room in the NICU. Me and my sister spent a lot of our time in the waiting room there. I had never been able to see my brother until November 11, 2015 at around 11.30 p.m. Around an hour later, me and my sister were in a different room than before and we were told that my brother had passed away. I wouldn't see him again until his funeral. I do not remember the date or anything about the funeral except for that it was an open casket. I had never seen my dad cry before the day of the funeral. Every time it is his birthday, we go to his grave. Every November 12th, we go there as well. Every time we go, my dad always tears up. I will never forget those days where my dad cried. I was a kid, but I still remember it. I was in the VAR with my dad. We were on the road somewhere, and at the side of the road there was a parking area. Right next to the parking area there was a cliff. I saw a car flying off that cliff. Apparently a guy had committed suicide, and he had his effing family in the car. The car got on fire, and I could hear screams of a woman burning. Whoa. I've watched two people die. The first, at age five, was on my first and only visit to my grandfather's house in Florida. The first time I met him, he was introducing everyone to his partner. They had been together like 20-something years at this point. She reached out to hug me and had a heart attack and died while the ambulance was en route. 
The second, I was six. The person was a 20-something girl that drowned in a hot tub at a resort we were staying at in South Carolina. She apparently got her hair caught in the water intake while she was holding her breath. Her friends could only sit by and panic as she drowned right next to them. What? This probably isn't the worst thing I've seen, but it was the most scary or terrifying, if that makes sense. I'm currently in high school, and I'm also taking carpentry at a trade school. We were at the top of the roof trying to nail in some rafters, and there was a corner that had nothing there, just a drop. Not sure why, but it was there. But there wasn't a rail or anything like that there. A guy stepped back, trying to make sure it was flush so he could nail it in, fell down the drop and landed on his head. Of course, we rushed down there, and he ended up bleeding pretty bad and got a concussion. When I looked down the drop, he wasn't moving, so I thought he was unconscious. Luckily, he wasn't. If you're in construction, or any job for that matter, always be aware of your surroundings and have proper safety equipment. Your first day on the site could be your last, or your 246th day could be your last. Be careful, people. No one should ever have to see something like that. And I don't blame you for not taking the bus. I was about 15 in New York City at the time. I was taking the bus to Canal so I could play at Chinatown Fair Arcade. This was normal for me, something I did at least four times a week. One time, when I was on the bus, a rather crackhead-esque woman stuck her head out the window to holler at someone on the street. She never noticed the other bus in the oncoming lane, and she was decapitated. Her body slumped back into the bus like a piece of cheese. I know that was a one in a million event to take place in front of me, but the image of her body traumatized me so much that I exclusively walked and rode the subway for the next 10 years. I'm 27 now and have just started getting on buses again. Then COVID happened and I haven't been on a bus in two years. When I was in Vietnam, a guy went past on a little motorbike. On the back was a cage rammed full of cats. He was taking them to the market to be killed for food. As someone who loves cats, this really disturbed me. They were all crammed in there and clearly distressed, and that image stuck with me for years. I've seen things that ostensibly are worse. Dead homeless guy, car crash victims, etc. But this really got me. Watched someone die in a horrific car accident, been seriously considering being an EMT, and have been a lifeguard for years, which many don't know makes you a legal first responder. One night I witnessed a really bad drunk driving accident on a major highway. One night and was far enough I stopped and called 911, then grabbed a small first aid kit with a CPR mask among other things. One guy and his family were fine, no bad injuries, the other was a different story. She was messed up, and as she had rolled her car and her arm was not attached anymore, 99% sure it was out of the window and it was snapped off. You could clearly see she was dead. Looked like she had a rough life, drugs, etc, etc. Ended up helping the family with their scratches, making sure they were okay. Still can't get it out of my head. It's not that it's graphic, it's the coincidence in this story that I remember. One that sticks out for me is walking down a back lane one night, then encountering an odd four-way intersection in the back lane. I looked left and saw about five or six properties down the lane. Near some overgrowth, there were three dudes standing over a guy on the ground and they were feeding his face a shitload of boots. I kept on going because shit to do. Cut to maybe three weeks to a month later. I'd spent the night at a friend's place drinking and left to go catch a bus home around 6 a.m. ish. It was early as balls. Anyhow, the bus comes. I take a seat third row from the back. Two rows ahead of me is the skinnier looking guy. Kind you probably don't want to strike a conversation up with. Well, he sees me and starts trying to get my attention with this grin on his face. Psst, yo man all the while signaling me to come sit by him. I'm still drunk, so I tell him to come to me, so he does. Starts talking about some shit going on in his life. My takeaway was that he just wanted someone to listen on with his story. The bus we're on goes past the hospital, and the guy sitting with me now starts choking up. Starts telling me, man, my pops is in there. Three dudes jumped him and curbed him. He's got brain damage now and can't even recognize him. It just brings a lump in your throat, you know, man? I could see he was tearing up a bit again. This is a fellow you wouldn't normally want to talk to, and he's bearing his soul to me on the bus. Anyhow, the chat wraps up, we go our separate ways, and then the next morning it clicks in my effing head that I possibly witnessed that shit. Still lefts me up, dudes. It's a hard choice. 
Either the time I helped with a DNC, which the baby had died five weeks before, I was in surgery crying as we were suctioning little baby parts out, or doing another surgery thinking it was just going to be a removal of an organ, immediately turned into holy shit, this person has widespread cancer and it would be cruel to make them recover from the surgery knowing they will die regardless. I could barely keep it together till they woke up and I could safely leave. Healthcare sucks real bad sometimes. As a kid, sitting in the back seat, folks in front, little sister next to me, would be the mid 60s. Don't remember any seatbelts, dad was driving us through a mountain range. We were in a line of cars following a semi pulling a big animal trailer. Semi wrecked, trailer rolled. We had to drive past, dead horses everywhere. Some on their backs with legs in the air it was horrible. I'm 63, and this was the first thing that came to my mind when I read the question. I was at the train station waiting for my shuttle to the airport. It was kind of an ordinary day. People going to school, work, some coming back from late holidays, and me taking a flight to go and visit my best friend for my birthday. All of a sudden, there is a terrible, loud, squealing noise, train breaking hard. Then people started screaming, asked for help. I don't know why, but I had to go and check what was happening, but I will never forget. A teenage girl was pushed on the rails by her boyfriend because of an argument, just when the train arrived. Half of her body was under the train. We could see her chest and up, but everything else was probably mush. Her face was full of blood. There was blood on the rails, on her clothes, everywhere. Train station security crew came and immediately called the police and medic, but everyone agreed that it was the worst way to die. Being pushed under a train when you're so young for the sake of an argument? When the medic arrived, they were shocked to find a pulse, and the girl was actually breathing. It was faint, but she was alive. They started to take extreme measures to get her out of there, and one of them said that if she survived the collision, then it's possible we have a miracle on hand, and they have to keep trying. So they did. I had to leave, but the newspapers covered the story, so it was easy to follow up. Medics did try everything, but they later understood that no matter what they try, the girl will bleed to death as soon as they get her out, and she would be in the worst pain. So they stopped trying. They just left her there and talked to her whenever she'd regained consciousness. It took her almost two hours to die. God. Another reminder to tell the people you love that you love them. Life is fragile. Been four years now, but still makes me emotional when I think about it. Had a talk with my dad about football and went upstairs with my girlfriend to watch a movie. After half an hour, I went downstairs to get something to drink and eat during the movie. Ate a piece of candy that was lying in the living room and saw that my dad fell asleep again as he always did when he watched TV. Laughed at him because his head leaning back so far to the back that his glasses fell over the top of his head. Then I saw that his eyes were open. I tried to wake him up, but he wouldn't respond, and his body was starting to feel cold. Called the alarm number and performed CPR following the instructions through the phone, but he was already gone. His heart just stopped while I was upstairs. My life turned upside down in half an hour. Sorry. 